So you can get some pretty nice looks like vignettes, these little shadowing and falling off around the edges, just by playing with the light. But to take this to the next level, you also need to edit the layers parameters as well. Select a layer, and again type AA, Animators Anonymous, to reveal the layer's material options. This is a little known section of 3D layers that really can do some nice things with how the layer looks. First up are these diffuse and specular parameters. There are two different ways of lighting a layer. If I turn specular down to zero and start increasing diffuse, all I'm really playing with is flat lighting for the layer. Now for hot spots, I also want to increase the specular. That's what gives me the little bit of a brighter cone right in the middle of a layer. And if you want to, you can turn diffuse all the way down and use just specular to get a little more emphasize of a hot spot. I personally like maybe 50 diffuse and 100 specular to create these hot looks. So I'll go ahead and back off my intensity a little bit here. Next in line is shininess. And shininess basically determines how tight is this hot spot. Let's go ahead and crank it back up a little bit. As I increase shininess, my hot spot becomes much, much tighter. Decrease shininess, I get a very broad hot spot. The default is 5%, which I personally think is too broad of a hot spot. I tend to increase shininess a little bit just to make it a little bit tighter. And again, I think we're getting a little bit of a sexier look out of this. The next parameter in line is metal. Metal decides the color of the specular highlight. The default of 100% is very nice. It uses the colors in the layer itself to add back onto the layer and decide the color of the specular. If you reduce metal down to zero, you get the color of the light instead, and you get a very glary sort of look. If you have colored lights, you might want to use this, but I tend to leave metal up all the way, because that's how you create these really nice, almost blending mode or transfer mode sort of looks in the specular highlights. So those are the basic steps of using lights in After Effects to add a little extra to an image. Let's look at them on a couple other images, including taking some corrective action. For example, in this footage, this woman is being strongly backlit by the sun. You can see the bright sky behind here and how her hair is being lit up. But as a result, her face is in shadow. Let's say we want to reverse that and bring her face out a bit more. Well, I've already added a light in After Effects. And again, I'm using a spotlight, intensity of 100, cone of 90, feather of 50. These are just good starting points. I almost always use a white light unless I'm purposely trying to warm up or cool down the footage. If that's the case, I'll use a very slight tint of orange for warm or blue for cool. But I'll use white for this example. My footage is already in here, but it's a 2D layer. By making it a 3D layer, now it's receiving my spotlight. And you can see the fall off of the spot is already strongly vignetting the sky out of this image. Well, I have a couple ways of altering that vignette. One is just a simple scrubbing of the light's position in Z space. For more control, with the layer selected, type AA, reveal its options, and go ahead and play around with the cone angle and the amount of feather. And we'll get something brown there. So we're knocking down the sky a bit, but her face is still underlit. So to fix that, we simply crank up the intensity. Now we're bringing your face back out of the shadows, and we can go ahead and knock down our cone angle a little bit to again reduce the sky a bit. Maybe a little bit more cone feather. These things are balancing acts. There we go. The only problem, though, is now her nose is a bit overlit, a bit blown out from all this intensity. Well, to fix that, let's go to the footage layer. We select it, type AA to reveal its material options, scroll down, and I'll go ahead and reduce its specular all the way down, because we only want nice, diffuse overall lighting. We don't need the specular hotspot in this case. I'll increase the diffuse lighting, and get a nice balance where there's nice overall lighting on her face, and maybe increase, again, my intensity just a little bit. And again, if you want to see before and after, this was before the addition of the light, after the addition of the light. It's amazing what you can do to relight a scene after the fact. Now this trick is useful for other things, not just footage of people. Here I have some footage of just some gears. It's got some nice metal tones in it. What if I really want to emphasize those with lighting after the fact? Well, again, I've got a light, same default as before, spot, 100% intensity, Kona 90, feather 50. Select my footage layer, turn on its 3D layer switch, and now I have my vignetting look. Select my light layer, T for intensity, and crank it up to get that blown out hot spot. Now a nice bright metallic look. What if that hot spot's a little bit too broad? Well, again, to change that, I select the layer, not the light, AA to reveal its material options. And I can play around with the diffuse specular balance, but in this case where I'm worried about how big my hot spot is, 
Shininess is the number I want. Higher the shininess value, the tighter my specular hotspot. Low shininess, very broad hotspot. Now what if I actually don't want anything like an obvious hotspot, or any vignetting around the corners here? I would just want this whole scene to be evenly lit. Well, I can change the type of light that I'm using. Let me double click my light layer, and change from spot, which is coming from one location and going out in a cone of light, and change it to ambient. Ambient evenly lights the entire scene. Click OK, and now the whole scene is bright. And again, scrub the intensity to get the amount of overlighting that I want. Before and after.